Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode 19 of this NHL 20 Hamilton Tigers franchise mode. Today we are jumping into the conference finals, our first ever franchise appearance in the conference finals going up, well, what is a pretty solid Philadelphia team here. I mean, there are some other good teams. This is one of them. Um, Anaheim is still in it as they have some very good players. Obviously, uh, their goaltending is the biggest kind of thing here, though, that we need to pay attention to. Uh, the other teams remaining are Colorado as well in the West. Um, they've got some very good talent here as well. Like, look at this. Like, why is Braxton Ramsey not playing on the right wing there on the first line like, or on the second line? Like, that just doesn't make sense. But anyways, uh, they have no goaltending. So that is definitely interesting. I am betting on Anaheim because of the goaltending. And then we are going up against Philadelphia, who, remember, we traded for Carter Hart a couple of years back, so they don't actually have a top-end goalie anymore, which is very good to see for us. Um, Hellenius, they did draft first overall a couple of years ago. He's a playmaker. Should be playing up the middle, but they've got so much depth there that uh, they had to move him to the wing. On defense, they've got two really good top-end defenders. Besides that, not much else in that team, really. Uh, Bennington, they've got. He's considered an elite goalie. So he's, yeah, he's still pretty good. Um, but when we go and compare that team that we just looked at that had, you know, two more points than us, I think, on the season. When we compare that team to our team, um, really, I don't think it's even comparable, to be honest. But um, the game will say otherwise, obviously, as we get into it. Um, the biggest kind of disappointment here has been Rasmus Dahlin dropping off from a franchise defenseman. Loses a little bit of potential. Not much, but um, yeah, that's too bad. Anyways, um, that's going to pretty much be it here before we really jump into this series. Quincy Abister is giving us a very good chance of winning here as he has been lights out so far in the playoffs as a 25-year-old Tendy. So Philadelphia is ranked ahead of us at the moment, as you can see with the away games there to start off. They did have one more point than us. They won one more game, and we lost one more game in overtime or a shootout. So yeah, a little bit disappointing. Oh well, that happens. We don't have home ice advantage for this series, but we are going to get into it here. So, with our first away series in this playoff run, we will be visiting Philadelphia on their home ice. First period, the Tigers come out roaring as uh, they score four unanswered goals before Trocek finally gets a goal with just under a minute left in the first period to break Quincy Abister's shutout. Only one shot difference there in the first period, but some serious uh, quality finishing there as the Tigers chase Biddington from the net within the first 14 minutes of the game. Second period, uh, the scoring continues really as Nicholas Matsumoto and Patrick Laine both find the net on wall there. Uh, Anders Bjork does get a single goal again for the Flyers, but really this game is looking out of reach for them now as game one on the road goes completely the Tigers' way. And really, there's just no question. Well, maybe there is. Maybe there is after that goal from Konechny. But as long as we can just defend here for another 10 minutes, we should be fine. And 7-3 um, there, Luke Leopold scores. And really, that's going to be pretty much wrapping up this game. As there's not much of a chance of Philadelphia coming back with just under 3 minutes left. So there it is. Huge first win on the road. This Tigers team is rolling right now. They are in their stride. They have found it. And as I predicted, Anaheim wins game one uh, with the better goaltending there, really. So, second game here at the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia. Starts off 1-1, a little bit more controlled this time. A power play goal from um, Nicholas Matsumoto was followed up by a goal from Taves there. Uh, 10 minutes later about and the Tigers completely outshoot the Flyers 16 to 6 Second period it's 2-2 as Anders Bjork makes it a 2-1 game For the Flyers and then Mikhail Savan answers right back just six minutes later on Again a power play goal. We have been clinical on the power play this series so far 
So let's continue that. And hopefully if we can draw penalties, then uh, we will make the other team pay here. And I mean, two wins on the road would be fantastic, but I may have just jinxed it by saying that. So how is this going to go here? We are still tied with just under four minutes left. Is there going to be a goal before the end of regulation? Power play for the Tigers does not convert. We head to overtime. So here we go. It continues. Power play for the Flyers does convert. And they win game two on home ice with a power play goal from Sean Couturier there. So unfortunate loss there. Obviously, we can't be in, going and taking dumb penalties in um, in overtime. That was just stupid. And uh, our team pays for it, really, in the end. So as you can see, the Ducks go up 2-0 there. Mikhail Savan now leads our team with 15 points in 13 games. Um, I have actually been focused on the draft class a bit here. Not so much the top end. We really don't need any more elite prospects in this team. We've got what we've been looking for, really. And uh, I do have pinned players here, mainly uh, second rounders here, like Lidstrom and Grossman. And Grossman's not a second rounder, but Hakana. Look at those A's. Look at those A's. He is a fully NHL ready player. We are definitely going to be looking for him. Um, Hanula looks all right. Uh, Moore wasn't terrible. Three-year ETA still, though. Horton, same kind of thing, three years away. But uh, I think Lidstrom was the other guy. Yeah, look at that. All Bs across the board. Only one year away from the NHL. So, yeah, we definitely have some prospects that we are looking to invest in heading into the next draft. But we still got to get through the playoffs first. So... Game three at Eastwood Arena in Hamilton. The Tigers look to take a 2-1 series lead on home ice, and first period seems to stay about pretty even as it did in game two there as the Tigers actually get outshot quite heavily this period. A uh, shorthanded goal by Travis Konechny converts first, but then Alexi Lafreniere finds the net against Jordan Bennington. Second period. It's a 2-2 game as Charlie Coyle scores again for the Flyers, and then Sean Bengoa ties it, heading into the second intermission. Um, really, the Tigers just have to score first here. That has kind of been the biggest thing, and Sean Couturier makes it a 3-2 game. So this is not looking as promising as the last couple series have gone. So, yeah, Nick Jensen makes it 4-2. This is pretty much over for the Tigers here in Game 3, and uh, that's not good. Power play doesn't convert again. I can't tell you guys what's going on here. Lafreniere does score with five minutes left. But really, is Lafreniere the only player on this team? Looks like it as uh, we lose that game 4-3. It was just too far out of reach. And that's rough, man. That is really rough considering that one line was clicking so well, but the other lines just did not perform. Carson Lambos is out with neck strains, so that is a problem. He probably got hit pretty hard if that happened. And uh, by the looks of it, we're going to have to shuffle the lineup a little bit here. So Darlene's going to move up, Jilson's going to move up, and then is going to stay where he's at. But we are going to bring, uh, let's go with Travis Dermott, put him in there, and that looks all right. I mean, he is 75 rated, so that's not spectacular, but it works. So, heading into game four now. The Tigers are down 2-1. The Avalanche did win a game back. That must have been on home ice, I would assume. And, uh, I mean, we took one game off of Philly. They take one game off of us on home ice. So, it's looking even right now as long as we can win uh, this next game. Again, Starts off 1-1, Matsumoto opens the scoring this time, and Vinny Trocek just ties it there with no time left in the first period. The Tigers outshoot the Philadelphia Flyers 13-9. Second period, it's a 2-2 game again. What is going on with this series, man? Um, Dwight Danton again opens the scoring for the Tigers in the second period, and then Hellenius ties it for the Flyers there. Heading into the third... Man, I'm not even going to say it. You know what needs to happen here. And if the Tigers can't convert, that's going to be a problem. But uh, so far, it's looking pretty dead even still. And Patrick Liney finally breaks that deadlock as he makes it 3-2 there. Power play for the Flyers does not convert. They actually get two. So, yes, it does. Great job, boys. Way to go back to back there and let Anders Bjork tie the game up. 
So we are headed into overtime where we have not been good so far this series, and we have to do something here because this is just not looking spectacular for us right now. We've gotten 38 shots on net and only scored three times. And power plays both ways don't convert, and Philly takes a 3-1 lead here. That is not good. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, so here comes the gameplay because you know the Tigers want to make it through to that Stanley Cup Finals. And being down 3-1 is about as far away from that as you can be. So, not looking spectacular right now. The Tigers put themselves in a shitty situation after losing, not just losing, but blowing two games in a row. They had the lead, and they lost it. So... You guys got to be better. That's all I can say is this team has to be better if we are going to win. So first period of game five back in Philadelphia. It's 1-1 yet again. What a freaking entertaining series where we get the same fucking scores every time. Esteban Slaney scores first. Joel Farabee ties it up. Second period. Wow, it's actually not a tie game after the end of the second. Uh, Mikhail Saban scores, so does Gostaspear, but then Luke Leopold makes it a 3-2 game. Heading into the third now, it is uh, really got to be all Hamilton's game here as they make it 4-2. That's a good good job there. And uh, Philly brings it back at 4-3. Man, that's too close, especially with the time remaining. And how's this going to go? Slaney makes it 5-3. Or sorry, not Slaney, Matsumoto. And then Jenner makes it 6-3. So, that looks like it's going to seal up this game 5 here, and the Tigers survive for yet another game after facing elimination here. I think it's pretty fair to say that that has not been the case in our previous series, where we have pretty much walked all over teams. Um, if you look back at our other two series here, we... Actually, wait, sorry, I wrote that down wrong on my paper. We were close with... Uh, with Florida, I forgot about that. I thought it was a farther apart series than it was, but then we did sweep uh, Tampa Bay. So I need to correct that on my sheet here, actually. All right, so... Um, Heading back home to Hamilton, where we have lost every game that we have played there so far in this series, we look to survive yet another elimination game against the Philadelphia Flyers, and how does period one go? Down 2 nothing. goals from Goldobin and Ratcliffe make this game pretty far out of reach as Hamilton only gets four shots on net in the first period. That has to improve. Second period, it is a 3-all game as Gostaspear scores once, but Line A puts two pucks in the net along with one from Bray and Steves. This is looking a little bit better here. Third period now, the Tigers just have to get it done here. They can't lose another game on home ice, and if they do, that will be the end of their playoff run as Ivan Provorov does find the back in the net, making this a 4-3 game. Power play for Philly does not convert, and we are going to jump in. We have to, otherwise this team's done. Like, there's no way they're going to score. We know that they're not going to score, and uh, we're going to try to help out. But when you look at the team ratings, you think, oh, yeah, the Tigers should be all over the Flyers. That's not how NHL works. <laughs> so here we go. Game six at home. We have to get a goal. All right, here we go. Third period, eight minutes left. We need one goal to tie, another to win. And really, we just got to play better defense. Oh my God, that was a little dirty. Charlie Coyle, not appreciative of that. All right, let's go cut across. Mikel Savan going to peel off. All 
All right, here we go. Savan's got some speed. Good shot. Oh, Steve's didn't shoot it. Dayton going to play the body really well on that. Really? Really? He's just going to beat me like that? Like, get out of here. Okay, Savan, this is all you, buddy. Here we go. Oh my god, shoot the puck. There's a couple big hits there. We really laid a guy out. Line A, looking to shoot. Doesn't, of course. And Lafreniere going to try to pick the corner there, and we're going to get a whistle as I need to change my controller batteries. All right. So, yeah, good chance there, but uh, really we have not had anything critically dangerous yet against um, the Flyers here, and we have killed off almost half of our time. That is a good shot there. Provorov going to get bodied there by Slaney out of all players, of course. And then Darlene's going to get beat here. They're looking to make some stupid cross ice passes again because that's all this team does that's all any team's gonna do here and that is way too close get that out of here Darlene gonna send it up Braxton Walton gonna get stepped into and we are gonna fucking hurt some Philly players now if they even want to carry the puck anymore they're gonna get hurt really get out of here So we are running out of time. That is the only way to put it. We are running out of time. We got a minute and a half left. And this is not great. Here we go. Nylander's in. He's just got to finish this now. And he missed it. Fuck. Oh, come on! You can't cover that every fucking time! There we go. That was a pass we needed. Okay, come on. Nylander looking for a pass. Doesn't find it. Bengoa going to cut in, doesn't get a shot off, and that is probably the series right here, as there's just 15 seconds left. And yeah, we take a penalty with two seconds left. So that was spectacularly terrible. Um, and yeah, the Tigers are going to go out in the third round here unfortunately but um yeah they didn't play well they lost all three games on home ice and so yeah philly's through boo them away because really that's honestly you should be booing your own team for how horrible they played but um yeah first round or first round third round elimination Better than a first round elimination for sure, but uh, we we can't be that bad. Like that was just uh, that was just terrible overall. So yeah, four two defeat, and uh, Couturier is going to come and collect the Prince of Wales trophy here. So yeah, you know, that's unfortunate. We probably should have scored on Bennington. He's not that good a goalie. And uh, we didn't, which is too bad. So there you go. We're eliminated. And uh, we will get on here with the offseason, I think. That's kind of going to be our main goal here. You know, there's not going to be a lot getting done in this offseason overall. But yeah, um, you know, I still got to get done. And uh, 
yeah, we're going to send to the draft. Colorado wins three consecutive to beat, wow, to beat the Ducks. So we got Colorado and Philly in the finals. My prediction is going to be Colorado all day because, you know, you don't need goaltending to win games, apparently. And, yeah, we get a new contract offer here with the Hamilton Tigers. Obviously, we want to go back with them. They have been a very good team so far. And there it is, Colorado wins the Stanley Cup. So, yeah, something nice about this franchise mode so far is that not a single team has actually won the Stanley Cup more than once since we started this series. So, that's good to see. Um... And let's see where this draft lottery lands us. So we land at the 10th overall pick with Arizona's pick there. That's not too bad. Um, you know, I am I really couldn't care less if we had jumped up more, but it didn't happen. Obviously, we don't win the Stanley Cup, and that's a little disappointing. So we got pick 10 in here. Uh, pick 10 is looking like Talender might be our best bet there on the wing. Actually... No, you know what? We're going to go with Cronwall just because he's an elite goalie most likely, um, especially with a one-year ETA too. That is what you like to see. I don't know what other picks we possess. We'll have to figure that out. Maybe try to acquire some more second-rounders here as our team is looking to, um, what do you call it? Ooh, Ovechkin retires there. 943 goals. 943. Did we have him for a season? I feel like he played in Hamilton for a season. No, he did not. He played in Boston and St. Louis as well. 943. Is that? I have to check that. Yeah, he blew him out of the water. He freaking blew Gretzky out of the water. Beat him by 50 goals almost. And uh, yeah, wow. Alex Ovechkin is your new all-time leading goal scorer in the NHL. Evgeny Malkin also retires, same with Joe Pavelski, Alex Radulov, Shea Weber, uh, a couple big names in there for sure. No other real defensemen, TJ Brody was in there as well. Goaltenders, Hutchinson and Condon are the only two to retire with double digit wins, no triple digits in there. And do we lose any coaches? Um, doesn't look like it. All right, that's good. All right, so heading into this draft, um, we'll throw Christian Juice up there for sure. And I'm kind of interested to see where all our picks are landing. Matsumoto is a high elite there. Um, I'm kind of feeling a guy like Dalin might be on his way out here pretty soon as Carson Lambos has to be on his last year. Yeah, he is. Braxton Walton hits an 86 overall. Holy Jesus. Um, wow. I mean, yeah, he put up 63 points. That's pretty fair. Um, my God. I was not expecting that much growth, though. 86. 86. Holy crap. Okay. And, yeah, as you can see, we still have a lot of depth in this team. Overall, um, but yeah, we are looking to land a couple decent prospects here for the future. As far as our picks go, obviously we can't really tell. We do have three first rounders actually, so that's not too bad. Um, and unfortunately, unfortunately, a Bister is also done on his contract, so we got goalies to sign. To I think Blackwood might be on his way out, maybe, but. We don't really need to make a lot of trades here, maybe for some second rounders, but yeah, by the looks of it, no one really wants to trade. That's totally all right with me, and we do have three first round picks here at 27 and 30 as well, so that is definitely good. Wait, hold on two seconds. I think Dalene might be at the end of his time in, I think he is. Yep, that was season three, so he's done. We have to trade him off, and um, I guess we might be landing a lottery pick then by the looks of it, as we do need to move Darlene, and I want to get some kind of piece back in return for him. But I also want to trade him to a team that is competitive. <laughs> Odds we trade him back to Buffalo for a fourth overall pick. 
Or is Buffalo on the rebuild? They shouldn't be. They've got enough players in here. Topi Philpola, that's a nice player. Um, but no, obviously we traded them Coloma and Bjorkstrand. They're our two back-to-back -back fifth rounders a while ago. And man, if we can get the four, actually, I need to I need to double check which picks we have. Um, we got pick sixty-two, which is useless to us. Actually, no, it's not. Never mind. I can I can definitely pick something up with that still. And then 126 is good, and uh, 222 is not good, but 190 is. So I can trade Hamilton, or not Hamilton, I can trade uh, Buffalo these two picks here alongside um, Rasmus Dahlin in exchange for, let's see, what picks do they have? I'll take pick 34 as well. And I think that's a pretty good trade for them. I think they will accept that. And reject it. It's too far off the table. All right. I guess they don't want that. Okay. What about Detroit? I believe. Okay. They had the second pick. Actually, which prospect are we looking for here? Okay. Let's let Montreal get their pick over with here. Gron is an 82 overall playmaker. Jeez. Okay. Um, so essentially, it's just who's got the most A's on their report here. Probably McPherson. Jesus. Um, we don't need a left winger. We don't really need a defender either. So... Maybe we go with two of mine and just because he, you know, he fits our system. Yeah, two of mine is probably the best bet. So if Buffalo does not want to trade, we will offer the Islanders a much better deal here. I mean, not much better, but it will be a, a fairly similar deal. So, uh, shoot, they don't have any of the picks I really want. What if we just trade up further, go with like the third here, and anybody have second round picks that I actually want? Kind of, 33rd's pretty good, but not over the moon. Okay, so we're going to go with Darlene and... fifth and the seventh rounders i mean that's totally worth it there's no question any chance we can get a first rounder from that as well probably not yeah no maybe we can get a second rounder next year though if we can get their second next year in this deal nope so we're just gonna have to go first and second they still don't accept it damn that is a lot to pay That's the only way I can put it, is that is a lot to pay. Um, you know what, maybe we send a guy like uh, Craig Pitt in this deal too. Simply because he's 22 years old already. Um, really isn't that crucial to this team anymore. Yeah, let's, uh, let's send Craig Pitt away in this deal. That should get it done. Oh my gosh, how is this too far off? I'm literally asking for two picks in exchange for a top end bona fide defenseman. You gotta be kidding me. Let's throw Mayer in there as well. Send him three defensemen for one defensive pick. Nice. Oh my gosh. <sighs> All right, let's go to the Islanders then. I legit want two picks. That's it.
I swear to God, if that doesn't go through, they'd have two... Huh? Oh, they're at 50 out of 50, that's why. Okay, send me your worst player then. I'll take Jones, that's fine. And come on. There we go. Hey, look at that. We finally got a deal through. Jeez. Okay, so second pick, McKinnis goes. That would have been funny if... Wait, what's his name? Angelo McKinnis. That would be funny if St. Louis got a McKinnis there. So we uh, we give up Dalian, but that was expected for the deal we were trying to work there. We pick up the 22nd overall pick, too. And now all we need to acquire is one more pick to land all the prospects I had pinned. So so we're looking at a second round pick most likely. Um, by the looks of it, St. Louis is offering what we're looking Actually, not St. Louis. We don't need the 33rd. That's a little too soon if we can go with the uh what is this like the 42nd 41st that's perfect if we can get the 41st from la here we should be good and honestly i don't want to offer too much i don't want to like overkill this by accident did we draft Veshi? yeah we did and we drafted oh no we didn't draft zimmerman interesting um The other guy I kind of want to move here is probably Sergeyev. Oh, maybe not. He might be fine. What about Zucker? Yeah, okay, let's try Zucker in exchange for a second. That should go. No, okay. So we have to go Zucker plus something else. Zucker, Zucker, however you say it. Same difference. Um, Zucker and Emery, maybe? They'd have too many skaters in the organization. Nice. Okay. I don't want to trade Sanders. If we go Zucker plus Mayer, that should be fine. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, yeah, we trade a bit to land prospects, but it will be worth it in the end. Uh, but anyways, over to pick five. Uh, we don't miss two of mine, which is very good because he is a very good defensive prospect. And uh, hopefully he kind of proves to be higher rated. And he doesn't really. He's 79 overall. But still, 79 overall, two-handed defense, or two-handed, two-way defenseman. Uh, Left-handed defenseman there. Going to be very good. Six foot two, just a monster, really, of a defender. And then over a couple picks here, obviously we don't miss anybody. And the player we are looking at isn't a player. He's actually a goalie in Robert Cronwell. One year ETA, six foot tall goalie, and he's a 73 overall elite goalie. Nice. So we got our minor back up there for sure. And uh, he will be tucking in. Is he only 18? He's only 18. Let's go. What a pick. Okay. Pick 22 now. We go over quite a bit. Uh, miss a couple players. Matsumoto. See, that would have been funny. Draft another Matsumoto, but. He'd take a while to get into the team. Talender was all right, but no, I am seriously happy with Cronwell as a pick. Uh, next pick we're going off the board for. I'm not going to take a risk on any of these guys, and we are going to take Samu Hakana, an NHL-ready two-way forward from Finland. He's 78 overall. Let's go. Jeez. Okay. So, yeah, we are stacking our team a little bit here, but that's playing the draft properly to be honest um next pick we're not even gonna like go down the list anymore we're just gonna select the next highest number one year eta defenseman matthias lindstrom how does he turn out 72 overall not too bad that is three set that's actually four 70 plus rated players in this first round and uh really doesn't get much better than that to be honest okay next pick interest in that guy but he's three year eta and doesn't fit our team okay um dubinsky's another oh actually maybe dubinsky is a big maybe as wait what's his eta two years okay you know what we're gonna take the risk dear god if he's actually a top nine forward 
as a playmaker, I'm going to be mad because then we missed out on chance more. But, man, we could use a center. So, Corey Dubinsky, 68 rated. Medium top six forward. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, and let's go over to pick number 41 now. Where we are going to end up taking uh, a guy slightly off the board, but it will be worth it. Oh my gosh, we still have a shot at Moore, really? You know, we might actually take that shot at Moore because... Our scout says Axelson's really good, and I don't think I trust that. So we are going to take more here because, you know, we just have less right wingers. So Chance more, 63 overall, medium top, 6 forward. Not too bad. Salo is a low elite. Oh, well. Axelson was higher rated. Nice. Stevenson was higher rated. And, ooh, Skewen was very nice as well. 61 overall low elite anyways moving over to pick number 62 now we're not going to trade it away because we're actually selecting an elite prospect with it um i feel like prospects haven't been our biggest strength here as we have just been focused mainly on the lottery and landing prospects that are nhl ready more than anything so we are going way the heck off the board here um, and we are going to be taking... Oh, actually, where did this guy come from? I just saw him. Okay, I didn't have him picked at all. Shoot, so now we need another pick. Because I wanted to take Andrew Chuck with this pick, but I actually want to take this other guy with this pick now. And we won't have a pick for Andrew Chuck. So, we gotta go pick up a pick. Um, at the beginning of round four here. So let's go with... Who's gonna be easy to trade with? I mean, I like how the Islanders have traded with us so far, um, but where does this pick land? This is pick number 97. Okay. Our guy's at 110. Okay, so if we go around 4, 97, 8, 9, 9, 100, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so let's go with the Coyotes. That should be pick 106, and it is. Okay, so that should be enough buffer that nobody picks uh, Andrew Chuck and... We are in exchange going to go for, let's see. Who do we want to send away here? We are going to send, I think Lindbergh. He's just one of the lowest rated guys available. He was yeah, undrafted, 23 years old already. But Lindbergh in exchange for a medium elite, I am totally okay with. So with this next pick here, we are going to select that low elite that we saw um i actually don't even know his name because literally i just found him there so we are going to take uh sick sick lanka dominic sick lanka sick lanka sick lanka or sick lanka maybe yeah, i don't know how to say it anyways he's a 65 overall low elite and that was actually better than our last pick in the second round here so that's pretty solid um I mean, nothing against Chance Moore or anything, but uh, yeah, no, I'm happy with that. Ooh, Tuzolino. Tuzolino is a nice pick there too, but we're going to get a very similar player to that, if not the exact same player to that in Andrew Chuck, who's probably just going to be a little bit bigger. Yeah, he's six foot two, and he's a 2A forward considered. So he's actually a playmaker, and he's actually higher rated too. So, I mean, yes, the Capitals get a good player, but we get the steal there, and what's his name, Sven? Sven Andrichuk? I believe it's Sven. Can I not? What the hell? Why can't I click on him? Okay. No, it's Stuart Andrichuk. Okay. So, pick 126 now. Select him off the board again. Did we miss any prospects? I would say we've drafted pretty thoroughly so far. Uh, we missed Gunderson, but oh well. I mean, 61-rated goalie is not bad, but not as good as a 73-rated elite goalie in the first round. Um, So, yeah, we're going to take Grossman now. Um, You know, hopefully he turns out. He might be a medium top six defender, and he is. Okay, that's too bad. But, you know, potential lies sometimes, as we have seen time and time again in the NHL draft. But, uh, yeah, you can't hit every single pick. I mean, you can try. Lam is an enforcer. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Um, 
Don't see too many of those, to be honest. The fifth round wasn't super strong, but it wasn't super weak either. Um, and yeah, we didn't really miss anything with that pick there in Grossman. So our last pick now, we're at pick, oh wait, we're at pick 158. Okay, so we are just selecting random prospects at this point because I really only had one more pick planned and we have three more picks remaining. So, oh boy. Um, so yeah, obviously we're taking Hanulo when we get the chance, but um, I think we'll take Grant here right away and then... Yikes, that is so questionable. You know, maybe we go with Dimitrakos there as well. So, yeah, we'll just, uh, we'll pick these three pin players that I've got. Obviously, they're not going to be the best available all the time, but, you know, they're not terrible. So, Grant turns out to be a low top nine forward. Probably not going to get a lot of playtime in our team, if any. Uh, pick 190 is going to end up being um, Hanula as really we didn't have a lot of other players to select. Like there were none. Wow. So few players to actually select. So yeah, we'll definitely take Hanula with this pick because otherwise we'll miss him with the next one. He's a 49 rated low elite, not too bad, and he's a 2A forward as well. And then for the last pick here, we're going to take Dimitrakos. Uh, probably not going to be much, but I'd say a low bottom six forward. But, oh, he's a low top six. Nice. All right. That's actually pretty solid for a seventh rounder, man. And uh, last two picks here. I mean, I want to see what else was in the seventh round, if anything. Um, another low top six in Bergfist. Low Elite and Shing. Hello, Nicholas Shing. How do you do? Um, and Suglobov, not too bad either there. So, yeah, you know, you, you miss a couple there, but really we didn't miss much. Um, especially picking up Hanula. That's pretty solid. So, yeah. Oh, Low Elite at the end of the draft there. Garlock. Or Garlock. Um, but, yeah, we land a multitude of good prospects there. Two of mine and Cronwell going to be the biggest names out of that draft as they are elites. Uh, but Hakana and Lidstrom, looking forward to. Um, who was the other big name that we were actually impressed with? Was Dubinsky, I believe. Uh, Moore wasn't great. Uh, Siklanka will be good eventually. Same with Anderchuk. Same with. Actually, no, Grossman was a letdown. Same with Grant. Hanula was good. And then Dimitrakos was a surprise. So, pretty solid. Pretty solid for a entry draft there, just kind of not really planning it out, just going for it, and everything seemed to turn out pretty well there. So we got a re-sign phase here. Um, I'm going to say Lambos. We got Lambos and the goalies for sure to sign, and then besides that, I don't remember who else is getting paid big here. Um, obviously, not a lot of guys need to get paid, but maybe... If Braxton Walton's uh, coming off of a 53 or 63 point year, he is going to be requesting a lot of money. And Mikhail Savan is a free agent as well. So I'm glad we cleared up some cap space getting Dalin out of here. We got 35 million and um, lots of guys here to sign. So, Jesus. Okay. Uh, thank God that we don't have to sign Walton until next year. Because if we did well, we might have a problem on our hands. Um, the Sockus will be in the NHL next year. Boone Jenner might not be. Um, same with Kajula. Wow, we got a lot of options here. Like, look at, okay, 80 and above rated players. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 20. We got 21. 80 plus rated players and then we got two really good goalies as well um blackwood unfortunately i don't think we will be re-signing um the other thing here is cronwell might not be getting re-signed either um or not re-signed but we'll probably play another year in the liga there okay that will be that's okay with me 
uh, especially to let guys like Busenius and Bednar grow. I'm okay with that. So, um, wow. Okay, um, Quincy Abister has just posed a fat problem for us. Uh, obviously, there's no way we're signing Blackwood now when he's requesting $4 million there. Oh, boy. Um, Jesus. Okay, so he's going to want 10, 10 million at least, yeah. So there's 10 right there. 7.9 is pretty good for Lafreniere. Um, and then Lambos wants 6, okay. So that's 23 million right there. And then um, signing Abister makes that 30 already. So tough decisions here, man. Tough decisions. We might end up having to let Line A go already which i don't like but we might have to and then if guys like boone jenner want two million plus yeah we can't afford that 1.2 is all right kajula wants one million that's good uh bangoa yeah, bangoa wants two million um okay gunler's cheap and nylander's pretty cheap as well okay so i mean we stand a chance here to get almost all these guys signed, but at the same time, some of these are pretty bad contracts, to be honest. So. Okay, I think the first thing we have to do is go and okay so first guy we're well we're gonna use the rule of um what do you call it here the rule of 85 as well all right so Okay, they're saying pay Savan $9 million. Um, I don't think we can do that. I think we can offer him 9.5, which is actually a stupidly good contract if he accepts that, um, even though he's actually the best player in our team too. Uh, Lafreniere wants the $7.9 million. So... Let's try 7.5, save some money if we can. Um, Carson Lambos is asking for 6 million. It's actually 6.75 or 0.75. They're saying bump that down to 5 million. I'm gonna bump it down to five and a half. And man, if we can get Carson Lambos for five and a half million for the next three years, that is a really good deal. Um, these deals, I don't think we really have to worry about. They're pretty cheap. But the other one that we do have to worry about is Quincy Abister, as he wants 7.2 million. And uh, we're going to bump that down to about 6.5, hopefully, if that works well. I mean, you know, I'm looking at the rule of 85 going, there's no way they signed for that cheap. And um, yeah, yeah, uh, Blackwood's not getting a contract. There's just it's physically impossible to give him a contract so we're going to advance a day or two here see if these big contracts sign and then we'll figure out how much we have left to work with for our other guys here uh lafreniere did sign the seven and a half so that's good uh, that's a that's actually a really good deal for where he's playing uh savan rejected the 10 million i believe it was which is two or no nine and a half so we'll have to offer him 10 Lafreniere signs, Lambo signs for five and a half, and Ebister does not sign for six and a half. Okay, so we have to go seven million for Ebister, ten million for Savan. That's another seventeen million out of that twenty-four. Okay, so that's a little rough, but we will get this deal or these deals done. 
Um, and then other guys that we're going to have to pay eventually consist of line is 12 million so that's just that's what's eaten up a whole bunch of cap space right now for a team that doesn't have a ton um we will definitely sign gundler for one point whatever million there that's cheap same thing here for nylander for the next three that's a really nice deal uh bengoa we will also samsonov don't sell yourself short man you're worth a little more than that and bengoa Bangoa wants more than he's worth. Yeah, 1.8 is probably a little bit more correct for him. Lars Dahl wants 1.2. That is available. And everybody else here. Okay. So we're going to go. Oh, do we want to sign Nick Cousins? I think we might have to uh, just because of the cap availability. And then two of mine, and I believe we're signing as well. I just want to check the depth in our positions here. Shit, yeah, we have to sign those guys. Okay. So Nick Cousins is getting what kind of money here? Nice cheap two-way contract. Ganey's going to want the same, but he's actually going to play in the NHL. Um, honestly, Jakobsen could probably almost play in the NHL too. He is 23 already, so that's not spectacular. But, wait, was Dubinsky playing a or CHL? Yes, he was, so we're not even going to sign him. Uh, Selenka was not playing AHL, and he is 20 already, so he is, or Siklenka, sick, sorry, I keep saying it wrong. Popov, we're letting him walk, he's in medium top nine forward, like whatever, that's, that's fine, he can walk. Um, and then Winnick, I don't think we even signed... Did we did we draft Winnick? Yeah, we did. He, I think he was a low elite, but he really did not turn out. Um, we want Ganey to turn out if possible, but again, it's hard to break. Like players have been struggling to break into our team by the looks of it. Um, left wingers, Kajula. We don't like these two guys. We don't really need to sign to be honest. Uh, versus guys like Hakana, we will sign. He'll be our top end forward in the AHL, and then we have depth. That we really don't need to worry about at all. Schubert's a medium nine. Everything else looks good. Jones we can release, honestly. We've got so many extra contracts. See, I liked how Boone Jenner fit our team. That was very good, how he worked together with everyone there. But like at the same time, we have so many guys coming in here that... Like, just let these guys go. We have to. Um, so I think we will re-sign Boone Jenner. Two years, that's not too bad. Okay. Did we get all the right wingers done already? Um, no, we did not. So Mahalik, we're going to re-sign. Um, Moore was playing in where? What league is that? That's the DL, okay. So we will sign him too, because otherwise he's just not going to play. Actually, wait, he's 17 now. He's definitely going to play more in the DEL if we don't sign him. So that is all right with me. Um, defensively, we got all our guys signed up here for the most part. We got a lot of guys on smaller contracts too, which is huge for this team. We're going to sign two of mine, and he should play in the AHL. Um, we're going to sign Emery, and honestly, who knows where he's going to play. He's 24 years old. I think we're going to buy out Christian Juice. Yeah, that's nice and cheap. And then Lindstrom was playing in the, I believe he was playing in the SHL. Yes, he was, so we'll send him back there because he's not going to get a ton of time where he's they're playing here. That's, that's just not going to happen. And then Lydeker... Tikhanov and Kemp can all walk. That is good with me. Um, we will re-sign Kwiatkowski for a 25 for a year. And Travis Dermott does want to re-sign as well, interestingly enough. Okay, so if we look at our group here, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then Dahl will be number seven. He will be our seventh defender. He'll be the one extra sub there. 
And then we'll have Plakanov and Tuominen playing together as they are right and left. Okay, so that will be our top pairing. Then we'll have Sergeyev and Pitt. And then I'd prefer Emery and Kwiatkowski, but you know what? Throwing Dermot in there is not going to... Oi! Okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> Travis Dermot, you got to be kidding me. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> we're not paying that. There's no way we're paying that. Okay. So here's the last one, the 7.2 million. I believe we offered six and a half. And did he reject six and a half? I believe so. So we're going to have to go 7 million on a Bister which is still expensive, but could be worse. So I think we are finally ready to go here. Um, this has been pretty crazy here in free agency. I did not expect this to go this wild. Uh, Savan did sign for 10 million. So that's a pretty good bargain. Boone Jenner did not like the amount of minutes he played last year. So he rejects that. Two mining signs, Cousin signs, Hakana signs, Jakobsen signs, Mihalik, Bengoa, Gini, Dahl, Sanders, Savan, Siklenka, Gundler, Venkateshin, Emery, Abister, Samsonov, Nylander, Kwiatkowski, everybody signs. Beautiful, except for Boone Jenner. That's our one, one last kind of piece here, so... When we look at centers, Ganey will be in the NHL. Um, one, two, three, four. See, that's our fourth guy right there is Boone Jenner. And that's who we want. So do we have two million? Yes, we do. We actually have seven million left in cap space. Okay. Um, Visakis is definitely going to be in the NHL. Um, this right wing is stacked. Like, it is stupidly stacked. I'm not sure how we're going to distribute players here. Because, yes, we have Savan. He's our top-end guy. But Braxton Walton's good enough to play second-line minutes. Um, we don't really need to clear up cap space at this point either. Uh, we will by next season. So that's when we will make a Patrick Line a trade. And Moore's good to go. We got one, two, three, four. Solid guys. I don't want to have Samsonov play another year in the AHL, but he just, no, we can't. We can't do that to him. If anything, it's going to be Visakis who goes down to the NH or to the AHL because Samsonov's done his time. He's ready to play here. Like, there's no way we don't put him in. Like, we have to. We have to throw him into our team here. Um, Nyla Kynan I want playing as well, but again, I just don't see that much space. I mean, Gunler's moving over, no question. But then it's between these two guys, because Visakis, I think we're going to send back down. So we are going to sim to free agency now. Um, actually, hold on two seconds. No, no, we, we're simming to free agency. We don't need to re-sign Blackwood. I know some people would be like, oh, get Blackwood, get Blackwood, you need a backup. Yeah, well, um, what's our goalie's name? Uh, not Bednar, but um, it's German, or not it's German, it's Russian, and I can't remember his name right now. Sadikov, that's what it is. Sadikov is going to be just fine. He's going to grow into a backup role here pretty quickly. So overall, we have the talent. There's no question that we have the talent to win. Um, we just need to actually do that now. And honestly, we don't even need to acquire that many more players. It's more just going to be we're trading line A to add pieces to, like, what, what do we even need? What do we even need in this team? Line A provides that top-end scoring on the second line. And <laughs> I just, I don't know where... We're going to be putting guys. I can't believe how many points Slaney put up with only eight goals. Like, the amount of assists he generates is ridiculous. Um, didn't Savan have a crazy good year? Yeah, he didn't quite have a point per game. Which is weird because I've got Sim Engine scoring on high. I've got players who should probably be playing better than they are. And um, I want to show you guys our new players that we've acquired here, mainly, or not mainly, namely, um, Tuominen, but 
the other guy I was looking at, oh yeah, Vasakis is new. I don't know if he's going to be playing for sure. Morgan Vasakis. I actually kind of like how he looks already. Um, all right, he wears number 42. I do have a question for one of his ratings. Um, because, well, he's a sniper. Okay, so... Damn, man, he's got 77 face-offs, and I seriously want to toss him onto the second line, depending on how good other players look in comparison. I can't believe that Samsonov is still in the AHL, but he is. You know, you're like, oh, yeah, we got a steal of a pick here at 79 back in 2020, and just... It's just never caught an opportunity, caught a break, and that's too bad, but that happens. Um, I honestly think... Why did I click Pocanov? I meant to click two of mine. In. Um, I honestly think that... Um, what's his name? I get the feeling that uh, Vasakis is going to end up playing center for this upcoming season, but... We'll have to see how the line shape up. So there's Joachim Tuaminen. Where's number 12? Um, pretty good looking player overall, I would say, as well. So welcome to the team. He's going to do a year in the AHL at least, if not more. And I mean, we have a lot of defenders available. So going to be interesting to see how things play out we are going to have to start moving guys just to make sure certain players end up in the right spots and like shit i mean we've got six million free in cap space still we could go after a certain number of these guys here and we don't need to there's just no reason i mean yes you could argue oh your center depth isn't strong enough maybe it isn't maybe that's why we're losing but we're going to give the Sockus a chance we're going to give a couple guys chances here to really prove their worth and their value on this team. Kemp, Mayer, all those guys don't sign. Carlson doesn't sign here. Johan Carlson, that's a new player. Um, but yeah, we're just going to get through this. Not going to worry about free agency again, really. I mean, yes, the last couple of years we have spent quite some money on free agency. We're not doing that this year. We're not trading picks, not doing anything like that. We have our team together here. It is set. It is good to go. We just need to see how it fits together now. So, starting off next season, 91% of the tickets sold. The fans are excited. That's what you like to see. I mean, yes, it was a disappointing knockout in round three last year in the conference finals, but our expectations are pretty clear. Finish first in our conference, sell 85% of our suites, 30 sellouts to establish home ice. They want us winning. No questions asked. <laughs> so, I mean, yes, the lines look messed up. They really aren't, to be honest. But um, we do have to balance these a little bit better than they have been so far. So, I mean, Nylakainen's got 78 face-offs. Vasakis has got 77. So, I think the way we're going to do this is... I love how every single guy in our bottom six right now is a right winger. <laughs> um, but no, Robert Nylander needs to... Oh, bang! Holy! My gosh, and he's not even playing. That's the scary part, is he's not even playing. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, wait, so let's try Lars Bang here in the bottom. <laughs> Man, that is a sexy defense. Plakanov and two of mine and fit quite nicely. Oh my gosh, look at this team. Man. Man. I like what I'm seeing. Okay, can we try... Who gets top line chemistry? Anybody? Not Samsonov. Um... Sanders just might... Uh, Corbin just might. Cousins should. We have Sanders. 
and Cousins. All right, there. So that's that's a little better. We can go Prokop, Sanders, and Cousins. That all fits together. Um, second line. That kind of fits the second line. Not spectacularly, but he fits it. Um, Mahalik's just good on Like, he's fine on the second line. Um, oh, Sadikov's 80 rated and he's not in the NHL? Oh, because Bedner's 81 rated. Jeez. Okay. Um, that's what you like to see, for sure. So... Yeah, maybe we leave Sadikov down for one more year just to develop, get more games in, and then he will surpass. Um, he will surpass Bednar eventually. It's just I get the feeling that with a twenty-five-year-old Abister versus a twenty-two-year-old Sadikov, I feel like Sadikov will eventually become the better goalie. Maybe not right away, but definitely going to happen eventually um so yeah we have to leave steves on the top line he just fits it so well jeez okay he's got all unfavored coaches though that's okay literally nobody likes hughes except for line wow Jeez, okay, that's a little brutal. Um, but no, what we are going to do here is, yes, Walton's staying there. Um, honestly, Venkateshin and Boone Jenner are almost, like, identical players. But what I'm going to do here, yes, Nyla Kynan's got good face-offs, but instead we're going to throw Noel Gundler down there we're going to throw Venkateshin on that wing and then Boone Jenner is going to sit in exchange for Robert Nylander who we know already fits in this group that's got to be like the best forward core I've ever built possibly like that is that is scary good and we could just play overalls here with uh, Nyla Kynan I don't really want to I'd prefer to does that not work, really? Huh? I'd rather keep everything just nice and balanced. Um, But no, I want to try Visakis there. He is... He's a third-line scorer. Shoot. Okay. Okay, no. So we are going to play uh, Nico Nylakainen there at center this season defense is all good uh we got lars the lars pairing on the bottom we got dwight and calais there and then we got carson and nicholas that is just that is so good man The fact that we have two top four, quote unquote, top four defenders playing <laughs> playing in our top six is absurd. And the funny thing is Lars Bang was drafted three years after Lars Dahl was and also 139 picks back from where, jeez. Okay, everybody else, yeah, everybody else in this group is a lottery pick. And then there's Lars Bang, who's just phenomenal. I mean, he can't skate. Don't get me wrong, he cannot skate. But he can play defense, and he can shoot, and he can play physical. So that's what you like to see still. I mean, everybody else on our defensive core can more or less skate like the wind. Um, yeah, even Khaled Jilson, man. Khaled Jilson can skate really well, which you like to see from a defensive defenseman damn all right so as far as captains go i mean the centers are going to keep their captaincies there i mean it's funny because it looks like we only have two centers yet we are playing uh nico nylakainen and noel gunler both at center uh, on their respective lines 
Jan Bednar is wearing number four, which is not correct. Um, let's give him number 34 instead. That's a little better. Okay. And besides that, man, this team is set to compete again. Um, <laughs> the defense is really looking good. I'm incredibly blown away by how good just this team in general is looking. Like, it is a championship status group here, no questions asked. And the draft class has got wingers mainly. Okay, interesting. So yeah, that is our team heading into this 2026-27 season. We got a good group. There's no reason why we shouldn't be able to win with it. And uh, actually, I think what we're going to do is Gundler's going to move over. Vasakis is going to play center with 77 face-offs versus 73. That all looks really good. Um, yeah, no complaints with this team. It's a big, strong, good-looking group. Very, very solid on the defensive end. Every defensive pairing strong. And then we got good goalies behind them as well like they're not spectacular goalies obviously you wish abister would have gone up a little more we would have had to win the cup for him to hit like an 87 overall or something like that but i have noticed that goalies have struggled to maintain their overalls a bit more in this game than in previous nhls as far as the ahl goes you've seen it all here it looks good and um the defense is rock solid like there's no question about that uh 18 year old Joachim Tuomainen is going to be very good in the future uh Ruslan Plakanov as well he is also going to be coming up through the system here pretty soon and I'm looking forward to seeing what these guys can bring to the team anyways that is going to be wrapping it up for this video if you guys are looking forward to the next season seeing what the Hamilton Tigers can produce then please go down below and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a video also make sure you leave a thumbs up on the video um, if you made it to the end especially and feel free to leave your comments uh, give me some feedback let me know what you're thinking and that's going to be it for me this is Etanios signing out and see ya